So here we have my dad's project he started working on. It's a uh, Yamaha moped. I call it a moped. It's a QT50 Yamaha hopper, which is technically what they call a noped because it does not have pedals. It just has foot pegs on it, but it was a 50cc motor. As we can see here, I mean, it needed some work. It's a 82 model, I believe. Down here, we took the motor out, and he started already building a uh, metal bracket to hold an electric motor. He's going to attempt to convert it to the same motor as we used on the mowers, or mower in the previous video, so it's going to run off of a Ryobi 40 volt system. Uh, this had to be fabricated to hold everything together. This particular unit is shaft driven which is interesting rather than a chain but because of the way it's mounted they use a single uh, shock absorber that holds it so there's really nothing else holding the rear end of the bike together it doesn't even have anything on this side it's just open there so it is absolutely vital that point right there attached to the motor is basically what's holding everything straight so this bracket had to be built to the same size as the motor to keep everything aligned properly. On the other side, he added a reinforcement there to keep it from moving forward or backward or anything like that. It's still going to need some work to finesse it and get it to the right size. The old motor was removed here. It actually looked... It, didn't run, but it actually could probably have been fixed easily, but would much rather go to electric than listen to a 50cc two-stroke since they're obnoxious. So it is going to get replaced with, let me go grab it. That will be the replacement for that. Uh, theoretically it should go the same speed with the new motor according to the math as it did before. Uh, the other thing that was interesting on this unit is their output shaft that goes here is a square shank drive and it happens to be 3 8 inches exactly the same as a socket extension. So technically all we have to do is figure out a way to get this to a socket extension 3 8 inch drive and connect it to the motor or to the drive shaft and it'll work so we will see what happens as this project continues so here's a minor update on the project here we now have got it bolted together so the frame bracket has been totally welded it is bolted in in here you can see there is the inside of the drive shaft unit which if you take a 3 8 inch socket extension fits in there and the noise is me not holding the shaft steady as I turn it but you can see it does rotate with that so and it has been tested now it will support its way uh, support a rider on it with this uh, we did a little bit of finish trim along here cut this cut the back plate straighter finished all the welds so it is progressing the next step is got to get uh, waiting on a controller to go with the motor and Hopefully some parts to figure out how to get the motor adapted to that shaft. In case anybody's ever working with one of these, the gear ratio on this rear end is a 5.5 to 1. Uh, and it's an 18 and a half inch wheel, which basically means whatever your motor is turning, if you, it's going to be uh, for every 100 RPM, it goes 1 mile per hour. So... A 3,000 RPM motor, which is what that Ryobi motor is, will be about 30 mile an hour. 
which, as you can see from the old speedometer, which will have to be replaced, is all it ever did. So, interestingly, too, the original motor weighed, I believe it was 29 pounds. It's either 26 or 29. Uh, the bracket that's here, even though it's quite thick steel, is only going, it only weighs six pounds. And this motor here weighs five pounds. So it's going to be considerably lighter with that. So now basically we just got to get that to go like this. And that's essentially what it's going to have. Sorry, I've got the thing on so it rocks. So we'll see what we find in future updates. So at this point we've got the uh, motor installed in the bike now. More bracing has been done. This, to couple the motor, used a uh, socket is attached to the nut that goes onto the end of the motor and then at the other end a piece of 3 8 inch square keyway was welded into it. It was all installed in a vise, pressed together and then welded. So now it is connected. I have tools out and all that, of course, so a little bit of a mess. We've got the wiring hooked up over on this side. This is just a temporary fitting for testing. It'll get cleaned up later. The box has been installed for the controller. The wheel has been rebalanced. It was way out of round and made a wobble. And up here, a simple system has been set up to turn the throttle. So there's your electric throttle and just a cross member here just to push the lever on it. But that works well. Dad already did some testing the other day with this battery and it will run for, without a load on it, it will run for an hour and it only used half of a charge. Now, of course, with the load on it, that's going to be quite different, but let's hook this up. And we can see how it works. As you can see, it's quite a bit quieter than if you had a two-stroke motor, without a question even ran all the way up to max that's all out speed right there and even at that it's not very noisy the slight vibration but it's not terrible you can see the tool sitting on the seat just wiggle it could probably use actually balance we just did the adjustments on the spokes back to off and to wind down. Before you can do any real road testing, we went down the driveway, but the brakes need redone. The front brakes are junk, so it will need that, but it's coming along. So the project has now reached a point where it's uh, ready for a decent test ride. It has, we've removed the speedometer since it didn't work anyway, cleaned up some of the cabling. Dad put new uh, brake pads in the machine, so the front brakes, rear brakes are working. It does still need the tires balanced a little bit, but it should be good for a test drive. Uh, the rear brakes were actually okay. It now has a little saddlebag thingy that holds two battery packs. Only one of them is connected, the other is just a holder for right now. He will probably install a switch later. Also added a brace on the side of the motor there to make that stronger. So all that has to be done is drop in a pack. We'll have a spare pack with us when he goes. And when you hit the throttle... There it is at full throttle, and it's still not very loud, 
vibration like it had before because it still needs that tire balance, but it's not bad. So we will do a speed test on it coming up and uh, see how fast it goes and also how far it can go on a battery pack. Don't know what to expect, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so we just returned from a short test ride. There's still some noises and a couple things to work out, but we were able to drive it a ways. I would show, but I don't have a GoPro yet or anything to show you. Um, it went down. We've got two batteries hooked up, and they're now showing three bars, but we we're also kind of messing around. Uh, I've got a speedometer app I put on here. And you can see up at the top on the stats, it's hard to see here, that it went 1.6 miles, and we got a top speed of 29 mile an hour. That was actually on level ground that it was doing that. So it's the same speed as it was when it was a gas moped, but now it's electric. So we'll have more updates as the project progresses.